Hello, today we're going to demonstrate the setup and operation of a total station. We're going to set up over top of this hub and tack. You want to take the tripod and extend the legs out to about chest high. Take one leg, preferably uphill, and set the tripod roughly over top of the point. We're going to use a TopCon total station. Never leave the instrument setting on the tripod without having it anchored down. Always leave one hand on the total station. Once it's on the tripod, you don't have to overly tighten it, but once it's securely fastened, it will not fall off. With one leg uphill anchored in the ground, and again, I can put my whole body weight on it and should to set the leg tight. I can look through the optical plummet, or in some cases they have a laser plummet, and as I look through the optical plummet, I'll see the tack. I can take two, the two legs by themselves, and as I look through, can maneuver around until I see the hub and the tack. And I don't have to be exactly on the tack, just roughly. And then go ahead and set the legs. Again, put your whole body weight on it to set it tight. Don't jar them, because it jars the head of the instrument. But you do want to set them tight. Now as I look through the optical plummet, I can turn the level of screws, and it will move the optics, it will move the crosshairs, until I'm over top of the tack. Now that I'm over top of the tack, the most important part is to level with the legs. You want to look and find the bubble level. There's a target bullseye level that you want to try to get in the center of the circle. And you do so by unclamping the legs and raising and lowering them. You don't pull them out of the you don't pull the feet out of the ground, but you simply raise and lower the legs until the bubble goes in. It won't on the first time. The bubble will tend to track around, but what you can do is track it and aim it at another leg. And you may have to do that two or three times. Once the bubble's in the circle, I can look through and see if I'm off the tack and redo this. It's an iteration, a trial and error process. The farther the hub is out of the ground, I may have to do that twice or three times. So I put it back on with the screws and then level with the leg. You get the hang of that, you'll have the main part of setting up. Notice it only takes a slight amount of adjustment on the third time. And I can just barely adjust the legs. At this point, I want to find the sensitive vial level. This vial level is about 30 times more sensitive than the bubble. And you'll rotate the head of the instrument. If it doesn't rotate, it means that something is clamped. Never force it. Never force it. Unclamp and make sure that it spins freely. And turn it until the vial level is now over two of the screws. Using thumbs in and thumbs out, using these as a gear, working these as a pair, the bubble will follow your left thumb. And then turn it 90 degrees, turn the head of the instrument 90 degrees, and I use the other screw by itself and level in the other direction. You're leveling in one axis with the two screws, and then the, on the second axis by the single screw. I can then check to see if I've moved off of the tack, and you probably will a slight bit, in which case you can loosen. You don't take that all the way off, but loosen the head of the instrument, and you can slide the head around just a little bit to get it over top of the point. Tighten it back up. 
and then we'll check levels one more time. And we're now ready to, to start up and run the total station. Go. Okay, now with the instrument set up and leveled over top of the point, we're now ready to operate or take angles and distances. <clears throat> Find the power button. And most instruments require that you go through or break the vertical circle and the horizontal circle. Simply spin through the axes and you should read, uh, it should be displaying angles. If it goes out of adjustment, a B letter will appear and you may have to go through the leveling process. <clears throat> the operation requires you that you first find the target that you're looking for. And you can do that by using the culminator or the gun sight point across the top and the clamp screw mechanism. In order to set, you want to clamp first. That prevents it from moving. And then you would turn the tangent screw or the fine tune adjustment, which moves it back and forth or left and right. Same thing in the vertical direction. It's loose until you clamp it and then you can fine-tune up and down. So in order to find it, you want to make sure both clamps are loose. I'm going to use the gun sight point culminator. And notice that I keep my right hand on the clamp. And then as I find it, roughly in the field of view, I can clamp it. And now as I look through, I'll see the target. You should have your crosshairs sharp. The crosshairs would be sharpened by turning the eyepiece slightly. And the focus, most focus rings are the larger rings on the outside of the, uh, of the eyepiece. I can turn the focus ring, and I want to make sure that the crosshairs and the image is focused nice and sharp for my eye. Now as I look through, I can adjust left and right, and can go up and down to get onto the target. The button operation varies between manufacturer, but for the most part there's going to be an angle button which allows you to turn the angle or read the angle and some sort of a measurement button that allows you to actually shoot the distance or the laser that uh, reflects off the retro reflective prism and displays the distance. <clears throat> there's also going to be a zero set mechanism which allows me to orient the zero to a particular direction. This particular model has a zero set button. When I press it once, it blinks, and as I press it a second time, it holds that zero angle. I can then hit a measurement button, and it will take several readings. And it will display the distance between here and the target. In this case, 11.985. I then unclamp and take a sight onto the next prism and will display and it will display and read the angle that I turn and the distance that it shoots. One thing to remember is to never force it. If it's clamped, it won't spin. Sometimes you'll get a little bounce out of them, but that's not real good for them. You want to make sure that they're always unclamped certainly don't need to over tighten them. Finger tight, lightly finger tight is, is, is fine and you can fine tune adjust. If for some reason they are run all the way out of travel, you need to bring it back to the mid-range and generally there is a line of some sort that puts it at the mid-range travel. So again, I can use the culminator, get close, lightly clamp it, find and focus, and I can do the adjustment left, right, up and down, and then whatever key sequence I may need to do to set zero or to measure the angle, turn the, uh, turn the angle. 